Hello and welcome to our 21 Days of Positivity discussion. Uh, we're looking at how we stay connected with our players during this current lockdown. I'm joined by three colleagues from our coach development department. That is Sam Griffiths, uh, Vinnie Housel and Matt Jones. I'm going to have a, look, a little wander through some ideas and some considerations about staying connected with our players today. Should also uh, just start us off by mentioning uh, around safeguarding. So a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about here is, is unusual to what we would normally do as coaches out on the grass. So I'd really urge you to go and have a look at the fa.com slash safeguarding and especially section six, where it gives you some understanding around the considerations you might need to take when doing online uh, contact and connections with your players, especially those under 18. The headline would be, though, don't do anything you wouldn't do if you're on the grass. So you're still going to have communications with parents rather than directly with players. You're still going to share your intentions with the parents to make sure they're aware of what's involved for them and their child if it's under 18s. You're still going to be dressed appropriately in correct kit. You're still going to have a suitable space to do this in. And obviously, you're not going to do anything on a one-to-one -one basis. And finally, I'd really urge you to involve other people around the club, whether that's the club committee. So actually, this could become a bigger thing than just you and your team. So we're going to go into a few questions today, but we're going to start off with our first one, which is around staying connected. Um, so going to come to you, Matt, first. Uh, this is all around 21 days of positivity. What would be your key messages around the positivity of staying connected? So I suppose depending on your mindset as an individual or as a person, January can be quite a tough month at the best of times. That said, given the very indifferent world with which we're all currently faced and have been for the last few months, I think the importance of remaining positive has, has never been greater as positive level, levels were, I think it's fair to say, very sternly tested throughout the last year, especially with the absence of grassroots football. Now, Staying connected can help us quite often when someone is low on positivity. It's like fuel. They can um, crave fuel from elsewhere. And so they might want to draw on someone else's as a, as a boost. Or maybe that positive person can reach out in whatever form to help give that person the lift that they need. And I would see it as my role as the coach to help nudge the positivity levels up for players and staff around me where I possibly could whilst also working hard to understand uh, why someone might be low on positivity in the first place, because it's not as easy as flicking on a switch. And one of the mantras at the centre of coach education at the FA is putting the person before the player. And the reality of the situation where I currently coach, which is at university, uh, one of the, the zapping positivity things for them has been that books made a decision very early on in September that all competition was going to be removed. So for existing players and new players, that's something that I've worked hard to make sure that we remain positive and try and draw out something from the season with which we're currently all coping with, shall we say. Cheers, Matt. That's a massive point there that we do pull positivity from other people a lot of times, don't we? Sam, do. in your world, in, in the adult game, in, in the female adult game, what does that look like for you then? Um, probably a little bit different to Matt currently as... Um, my group as well as many other adult footballers across the country are probably still waiting on whether the league will resume or not so we probably have a different challenge around keeping the players almost motivated for that next phone call whether it be the season is null and void or whether it be um, we are carrying on so for me it's very much around how do i work with my and keeping them motivated to the return, hopefully, fingers crossed, that we do get the league finished in the right in the right mindset and don't get pulled down too much with the uh, yeah. Sam, that's great. So, what what would you sort of describe your players' sort of current lives like away uh, away from football at the moment? What are they sort of dealing with on a daily basis that might affect positivity? Um, pretty much similar to everyone. Like we're we're just still classed as grassroots, so just an adult sort of grassroots club. Um, all still full time employed, so dealing with work, dealing with working from home, dealing with homeschooling, um, all of the above. Whilst probably still trying to compete at the at the higher end of grassroots football. Um, so that that's quite a challenge for some of them. Um, and just just keeping them probably focused is is probably a good word for for our group at the minute. That's great. Thank you. So, Vinny, we're going to flip to you because you're, you're coaching under 12s, again, in the grassroots game. What sort of things are you considering and, and what sort of things do you think your under 12s are experiencing day to day at the moment? Yeah, thanks, Mart. I, I think going back to Matt's point around that person first approach. So the person before the player is really, really fundamental. 
uh, to what we're trying to do at, at my grassroots club. And the vast majority of coaches that I know actually believe in that philosophy. And I think if we are putting the child first in our case, then that holistic development aspect is really, really important. So in terms of keeping the children positive, uh, also keeping their parents positive, trying to touch upon the, the four corners. So not just encouraging physical activity, which is obviously really important, but also that social connection and also that psychological element, if we think of that simply from mental health and mental well-being. So I think the holistic piece and the four corner aspect is really, really important to me, to the coaches I work with, and also to the parents and families. Well, that's great, Vinny. We'll, we'll go into some bits further on when we look at, actually, this is an opportunity this time. We, we can do some things during this time that we might normally not be able to do because life gets in the way. So we'll come into some of those in a minute. Um, also keen to pick up on your point there around that, that needing to stay physical, that we know that a big part of health and well-being is staying active and regularly exercising. Sam, you've got a, a bit of a way you're keeping your players on the move, haven't you? Yeah, so we're, we're using um, the Strava app, um, which is, is great for, for motivating the players. Um, it also helps us keep track on what, what they are and, and kind of what, what they aren't doing. Um, but it's, it's also provided some opportunities for those to in, interact with each other and, and give themselves challenges, whether it be a group challenge, a unit challenge. Um, they've actually came up with some of their own stuff. So that's been quite a nice, fun way to, for them to engage between themselves. Um, at the same time, like I say, important thing for us is that they do stay physically fit and well conditioned for hopefully a return to the start of the season. I think that's really appropriate for the adult game. And I know of a coach uh, near me who's coaches under nines and what they've done, they've worked out the mileage of if they were to play every game in the league, how far that would be. They've then put the kids into groups and they're just asking them each couple of days, just put in how many miles you've walked, run, cycled. And they're having a race around the county to see who could get around all the league games first. So a far different way of doing it for kids than you would for adults, I suppose. Um, Vinny, I know you've been doing some stuff around giving the kids things they can be doing with a ball in the back garden and down the park and involving parents as well. Can you give us some of those examples? Yeah, absolutely. And linking back into the, the four corner aspect that I mentioned earlier, our mantra at the moment is friendship, fun and footy. And I think for me, if I was to put one at the forefront of that, it would be the fun element. So, of course, we can share with the youngsters lots of detail. They can search themselves on the Internet around activities they can be doing. But if they can come up with some fun things, and that might be to do with identifying their favourite player and practising a little bit of techers in the back garden. Uh, I was watching the, the Marcus Rashford stuff recently and going back to his roots, obviously everything he's doing around free school meals, etc. And he went back to the housing estate that he was born and bred on. And they used to practise in literally a five by five patio area at the front of the house. So stuff that takes minimal space and you can practice in the house, you can practice in the garden. Uh, as I said earlier, myself and my son, we were just playing a little bit of Kirby, that famous old game that never goes out of fashion. Uh, so anything that's fun and really easy to set up, I think, is, is really, really important. Kirby, what a game. Love that. And uh, I've heard of another example. This is in lockdown one, but of a, a club who set up in their little parents group uh, a wonder goal of the week. So each kid was trying to score the most amazing goal they could and they add it into the video, obviously safeguarding through parents rather than going direct. And then each week there would just be like a team vote on who got the best one. Uh, and one of the ones I saw was was off a tree via a shed and, and all the rest of it ending up nestling in the back of a net. And you, know, you can be as creative as you want, but that bit of fun, the kids are out playing football, being active, still practicing, but in more of a free play mindset rather than this is learning. I think you tend to get a bit of a different feel from the, from the kids that way. Um, we're going to continue on and we're going to flip in um, into our, our own positivity around players. So, uh, Matt, I know you're quite keen to look at how we, how we keep the players connected and how we keep that feeling of connection throughout this lockdown. What sort of ways have you been looking at? Sure. I mean, just before I share that answer, I'm smiling here just listening to you and Vinny talking about classic games. Uh, I remember scoring some of my best goals playing jumpers for goalposts. The travesty is no one would believe me because no one saw them. But uh, that's the nature of the beast. But those positive informal moments that happen in the back garden for me are priceless. And I think the last sort of 10, 11 months of, of what life's become has probably reminded us of, of that, of getting outside and enjoying one another's company. 
whilst adhering to social distancing, of course. Uh, link back to my context around staying connected with my players. In a university setting, you've almost got like two categories. So we've got returning students, players that want to reconnect with their friends from previous years. We've also got the new intake who are dealing with that big life step, if you like, of attending university. And in a lot of cases, being away from home for the first time. And we know that university has been in the in the news as, as one of the hardest hit uh, institutions of, of how they've had to think and do differently just to survive and keep educating their students. So we as a club and as a society within the university took the approach of little and often check ins rather than too formal. Um, and people can contribute at will or opt out if they don't mind, because, again, we've got uh, different social dynamics with with newbies, but also returning players. Uh, I mean, some of the examples uh, come from the students because it's student led and some of the examples are led by me. So if I just skim you through a few of those, I suppose a more formal and obvious one is player led social Zoom calls. Coaches are invited, don't get me wrong, but quite often I'll intentionally step back because I know that the social aspect of university sport per se is important and it's good to let the players connect themselves. Uh, other things that I've taken a lead on uh, where we choose to use uh, an in-house social media platform would be flashback of football photos or footage of seasons um, gone by or coaching sessions and clips of, of bits and pieces that hopefully make returning players smile and reminisce and also give new players an insight into what to expect when we do indeed return and attempt to salvage something out of what would be their first year of university sport and football. Uh, I'm partial to sharing inspirational posts on uh, of some description, whether it be football, sport or just life related, anything from specific film or TV clips to montages with inspirational music um, or quotes to enhance particular stories. I've also shared a photo or a video of me playing um, a game with my kids in the garden, going back to what I was saying at the start of my answer. Um, so it might be me playing um, catch with one of my little boys or exercising. I mean, the other day I strapped ankle weights on and videoed myself running up, uh, up and down a hill with my seven month baby boy in the pram. And what I did was I posted it on our social networking platform and said with the strap line this is how i'm getting my steps in today how are you getting yours in and again there's no obligation for them to respond it's just to prod and pro them and say get outside and get in the fresh air and the final example I'll, I'll give is i entitled the post what is your guilty pleasure song by the song that you are not supposed to like but when it comes on the radio you can't help but belt it out or in my case murder the song and, and i shared my song and invited others to do the same and 50 song posts later, I kid you not, I learned something about the players, which I didn't know previously. But I also had a playlist of songs to take away, which I've saved. But um, all jokes aside, the, the players let their guard down when I asked them that particular question. And, and the posts and the communications that followed afterwards were, were quite um, warming and definitely ticked some boxes in the social corner. Some great examples there. I like how you've talked a few times about it being quite informal and quite optional. I think sometimes the, the case of a coach is we, we go, right, I'm going to organise this and I want it to work perfectly, especially in something new like this where none of us are really comfortable in this world, We're as comfortable as we might be on the grass. So what what's this, you know, what, how do you keep it optional with them? How do you make sure it isn't one size fits all? You talked about people before players earlier, so I'd imagine that would link. Yeah, well, that's the beauty of, I suppose, a, a social um networking site or media platform is that people can dip in dip out and i suppose what you're looking without without wishing to overanalyze it you're looking for little connections so someone can like something they don't necessarily have to comment and share their life story but it might just be a, a little like or um, a little comment and if someone's gone quiet it might be a communication through other people that you know within the club so i'm quite a big believer in empowering a a leadership group of senior players who I know I've got certain skills and attributes in connecting with other people, especially new people to the university. Now, of course, it's different because we're having to operate in a slightly different way to what we would do normally. But there's different ways of means of, of communicating and just checking in with people. But there's certainly no pressure. And going back to what you were saying before about the formal and informal, because they're having to take part in their formal education via the the media platform the last thing they want to be doing is spending too much time interacting via the screen and that's where social media really lends itself that's a great point you think uh, yeah the amount of screen time everybody's going 
going through the roof at the moment, isn't it? Maybe we could be a little clever and find other ways. Uh, Vinny, um, Matt talks around empowering there. Um, I, I know you've been doing some stuff around ownership for your players and actually you're having like a weekly Zoom call, but it's not really you leading it. How have you gone about that? Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of links back to Matt's stuff there. So the first of all, our sessions have only been going now for, for three weeks. Uh, hadn't tried them before during lockdown two and certainly didn't try it during lockdown one when we were all getting used to the, the strange uh, world of a pandemic. Um, so yeah, psychological corner again asking the youngsters to take part in a quiz and the first week i actually created the quiz but in terms of learning about the youngsters as people uh the quiz was simply six questions two to do with footy two to do with us i had to relate to either the coaches or the youngsters some insight knowledge if you like that uh, they had and then two general knowledge um so actually my son who's 11 he created the first quiz and then we simply pass the baton on and ask for volunteers and it's been fantastic we've had uh, two sessions since then and the youngsters just keep stepping up and want to create their own quiz uh, which has been really engaging from their point of view and of course the questions that they're posing to each other are more relevant for their age group as well so yeah it's been really powerful that piece. Yeah, Vinny you've also done some stuff using some game footage as well or some, some sort of good practice from players? How, how's that come about? How's that looked? And have the players found that? Yeah, thanks for that prompt, Mark, because we haven't really mentioned the Tech Tac corner, have we? Yeah. Um, and this has very much been about them watching just 30 seconds of footage um, and just volunteering some information. So we've been using the Teams platform and simply as the footage is rolling, then popping the hand up in the chat area and then a few comments a few thoughts a few observations and a great opportunity going back to matt's point that by doing it this way and really engaging the youngsters a real chance to learn something about them as individuals uh, i've really enjoyed that and i think that's my final uh, piece around any online connection i take the point that we're all doing too much of it but if you keep it to about 40 45 minutes keep it short and sharp lots of different activities, then the engagement can go through the roof. And that's what I've experienced with my youngsters. Absolutely. It's a great point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cautious that we, we, we've we talked about positivity, loads around players, but but what about us? Because there might be times when we're, we're struggling a little bit and a bit low on that, that positive vibes because we're not getting that weekly buzz. How how does that look like for you, Matt? How, do you, how are you keeping connected in a way that allows you to stay positive around football? Well, I'm doing my best. I'll, I'll be honest, I've been tested over the last sort of 10, 11 months. Um, but I, I'm a big believer in if, if you cannot look after yourself, how can you help others to look after themselves? And this comes back to I've taken on the responsibility of being a coach. I work with other coaches and I work with adult players. Um, but whether we work with adults or children, I always think, what am I modelling? And I have to work hard at staying positive. Um, but that's not to say that I, I'm not afraid to let my guard down and Personally, conversation for me is, 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 is a powerful thing and I welcome dialogue with players, fellow coaches. So whether it's a, a classic conversation on the phone or a walk and talk um, or a chat via digital means, I find it stimulates my mind and thought process just to have that game of verbal tennis and healthy discussion. Now, these don't have to be deep and meaningful conversations. There can be conversations about the little things or specific topics or questions. Some in just to maybe air a view or, or bounce an opinion, uh, especially in the world of football coaching. We know there's plenty of opinions flying around and that's what keeps it interesting. I know that we as a group of colleagues have spent a good 30 minutes on Teams calls as coach developers discussing a particular piece of match footage from, from the weekend's football. And sometimes we've We've had a disagreement or we've seen things differently, but either way, I've, I've come away absolutely buzzing from those conversations because I'm craving them. And I know that players would be and, and fellow coaches also. So it's good to um, stimulate them where you can. Now, if I do strike up a rapport with someone and we talk about life as well as football, it, it does reassure me somewhat when I listen to how the other person's feeling, especially in the current climate, because despite trying to be a glasses half full person, I still have dips in my mood and, and mentality as well as my own insecurities which sometimes surface especially as a football coach I'm, I'm forever questioning and doubting myself but hopefully for the right reasons and and sharing these thoughts and feelings can 
help me to deal with that, especially in a world where quite often you do feel isolated, even though I've got my, my family around me. So I suppose a top tip I would be saying to anybody now as a coach is if pre-pandemic you were always wanting a mentor or a critical friend, well, there's no better time now than to try and seek one out and pick up the phone and maybe have a conversation and start building a relationship with them. It doesn't always need to be that formal, does it? We, we just crave that. We crave that buzz that we used to get in a couple of times a week. Yeah. Uh, Sam, you've used it almost, well, again, as an opportunity. You've been doing some one-to-one -one stuff with your players, haven't you? What, what's that look like and how, how has that sort of made you react? Has that been something that you've really enjoyed too? Yeah, I think this lockdown's probably been different from the first lockdown for, for us as a group of players, group of staff, me as an, as an individual. Um, I've probably used this this lockdown to really challenge myself as a coach and probably expose myself a little bit um, in terms of getting some feedback from from the players. It's probably something that I've never really done, but I thought it was a good opportunity um, with not being able to obviously get on the pitch with them physically. Um, I think just going back to the point around the engaging the players online, one of one of the things that sort of made me realise when we talk about knowing our players was. How do you engage with the players that socially struggle? So some of my players probably socially struggle within the team and in the group. Then to put them online behind a computer and expect them to talk and interact, that's probably been a challenge challenge for me. Um, so moving forward, we're looking at doing some more um, isolated work with them in, in smaller groups online and just remembering that certain players might need an individual check-in versus this whole group positivity everybody's great because there might be that one or two in your group that aren't great so putting them in that environment they, they, they can really struggle so I think it's just being mindful of understanding your players individually of what each might need especially in the current climate that, that we're in I, I do think it's a lot easier on the grass when you can deal with players face to face I think behind the screens a lot a lot harder so coming up with just little things so um we've got a call tonight we're doing some one-to-one -one stuff and we've asked each player to bring a value to to their group that they've been put in so they're only going to work in small groups but they're going to tell the three players in their group what they really like about them as a player as a person whatever it might be um, so just try to move away from, from the football a little bit. But yeah, in terms of myself, I've exposed myself to that tonight as well to go what, what, what I value about the players and I'm going to throw it in there and go, what do I need to get better at as a coach? What do you need more from me? Um, but that's me as a coach knowing sort of where I am and the feedback that, that I want and that I can take and what I can do with that. So I suppose I've tried to use this lockdown as a as a challenge and to grow myself as, as a coach, I suppose, and done loads of reading as well. I've never read so much. I'm not a big reader. I've got to be honest, but I probably have read quite a bit in, in, in this lockdown. That, that bit around seeing this as an opportunity to develop yourself is huge. And how often do we actually step back as a coach and just do a bit of reflection or get some feedback? Because normally we're in this busy life of chasing our tail all the time. What a good chance to do that. And uh, Vinny, you're very similar to Sam around reading and keeping learning. You're even doing some stuff with some of the, the other coaches at the club, is that right? Yeah, absolutely, Mart. I've long held the view as a former PE teacher that every day is a school day. There's always something to learn, and that's a message that I share with my uh, fellow grassroots coaches at uh, my local club. Um, and obviously, we've got some fantastic opportunities for learn uh, or to learn on demand at the moment, haven't we, through the FA? So whether it be the FA YouTube channel, whether it be through the, the boot room, whether it be through the new online community. Uh, so they're things that I really encourage every single coach to explore, as I do myself, uh, finding stuff on there that I didn't know existed or that I just thought oh, that's a, a great chance for, for me to improve myself, linking back to Sam's point. Um, and then that one-to-one -one stuff, Sam, I, I think that's a fabulous point. You've talked about it in relation to working with players um, but we've got some coaches at our club who really value that individualized support and in fact i'm working with a coach just this week on thursday night he's been producing some fabulous resources for his under eights uh, he knows of my experience obviously 30 years in coaching and he's reached out to me to say vin can we get together on a one-to-one -one basis rather than it being a bit of a, a bun fight with 10 coaches giving lots of opinions 
And so I see that as a real opportunity to support on an individual basis. And you know what? I will learn something as well from that. And that's where going back to every day is a school day. I think if we can keep that front and centre of our thinking, then we can't go far wrong. I think a coach always means well when they invite a player's opinion. So if we take that out onto the pitch, uh, you might go and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a player. Um, and you've, you learn very, very quickly whether or not that was the right tact. OK, how, how comfortable were they? How much information did they give me? That's so much harder to do over the medium of, of digital platform, as Sam's alluded to. And this is why I go back to the example that I gave around. I know that as a male coach working in the female game, working with some brand new players whom I've ever only ever spent one session with, because our season was very short lived at, at the start of September, October time. The last thing they're going to do is open up to me via a digital platform because they don't know me. The fact that I'm a male as well might add an extra element to it. But what I could do was I could go to my leadership group of very trusted people and say, can you check in on so-and-so? Can you have a conversation with so-and-so? Because I want all new members to feel connected and part of the club, even though our season is, is somewhat very, very unique, shall we say, looking at it positively. Absolutely. A unique time altogether. I hope uh, the last 20, 25 minutes or so has, has given you a shot of positivity, has given you some ideas that you might go away and have a go with your players. Uh, I would draw you back to the safeguarding information I spoke about at, at the top. Please go and explore that before you dive in would be my, my top advice. I'm sure you've got some fantastic ideas as well around connecting with your players and spreading that positivity around your club. Uh, and But most of all, I hope you stay safe uh, and stay well and, and we keep ensuring that our players stay in love with football even during this, this odd time that we're in.